Okay, our very own Alan Fetterman will be giving a talk about raspberry pi threes and Ross genetic and all that stuff. So, have at it. Okay, thanks, Linus. I have uh, this. Everyone hear me okay? Yeah. <clears throat> all right, thanks. So, uh, this is sort of a, uh, you are guinea pigs. This is sort of the overview dress rehearsal of a course that Greg Maxwell and I are working to present in January. It will be uh, over two uh, Saturdays. And basically, we want to have people at the end of the two Saturdays walk away with a working bot back and a complete Ross, and a complete Ross kinetic on in Bluetooth 16.04 on Raspberry Pi. So uh, at the end of one day, hopefully, they can walk away with a complete uh, Raspberry Pi that they can run Ross and do the uh, simulations on. And on the second day, they get their vacuum cleaner and walk away with it. So this came out of uh, uh, Greg's wish that all the learning we did with uh, Max Dow, which uh, finished second in the uh, NASA challenge. And uh, it really annoys me, not, not that we, other than we didn't get any money out of that. What annoys us is NASA did not save a single line of code, a single schematic of what we did, and uh, so I don't know what the value of it for Those NASA Those are your was. guys too, aren't they, Alan? What? Those are your guys too, aren't they? Well, not for, well, they kicked me out of there a long time ago. <laughs> no, no love lost. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, as you may have determined, the uh, learning curve on Ross, I don't know, so I can't say that it's a learning curve, it's a learning cliff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Uh, on the ubiquity, we have at least uh, 10 people, and each of them have, it's like, it's like the elephant and the blind men, and each one has a little piece of it, and it's hard to put the whole picture together. But anyway, what we want to do is have a course and have people walk away with it. So I'll give you a little presentation, then hopefully I'll actually uh, get uh, Ross up on the screen on the uh, Raspberry Pi 3. And for the grand finality, I hope, I'll actually get the robot to move from here. No promises. Uh, but uh, we, we go by challenges. So, what do you need for the course? Well, you need a Raspberry Pi 3, which is our based uh, thing. We'll talk a little bit about the architecture in a minute. We're going to put Ubuntu with the Mate desktop 1604 and Ross Kinetic on it. So that goes on a 16 gig SD card. And for uh, your home use, what I strongly recommend is besides an HDTV, and uh, the cable is a little keyboard with a uh, keypad, keyboard with keypad. Got this one for 21 bucks in the uh, open boxes file at Fry's. Saved my life a lot of times. It's just easier, I think, for someone who's new to start out with the desktop environment and then go over to the command line. Uh, What's uh, cool about the Raspberry Pi and why it makes it a good platform is it has the bus uh, accessible and you notice on the left, the pinouts, you have uh, three volt power, uh, the I2C and the ground right near each other. So that is perfect for a little uh, real time clock. That's something that doesn't exist. I think they're uh, just somebody showed me they're selling them for two bucks now. Yeah. And that, you know, and so that's easy thing to add. Uh, when we won Ross in the real world, it helps to have the time the same on both the remote and the <laughs> same <laughs> unit. Otherwise, it gets confused when it sees when you boot up a system on a non-internet network like I am here. Uh, Ross will complain when it sees the data is coming from 1970. <laughs> it will decide that it's no longer current and it will uh, ignore it. So that makes it hard to uh, navigate. Uh, the other thing that's cool is you know you have the UARTs right there. 
So in our ubiquity projects, we just plug the whole board right into it, and we don't have to worry about the peripherals. But the Raspberry Pi 3 comes with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And the Wi-Fi works pretty well. It also has four USB ports. <coughs> Caution on the USB ports, you can't pull, you can't put four USB ports in there and expect the, the Pi not to fry. <laughs> okay, because each one of those USB ports is trying to pull power through something that's not designed to take, a, you know, even though it's fractional amps, those fractional amps, uh, those milliamps add up, and uh, I've had issues when I've used even one, uh, one uh, uh, little LiDAR, the Roby LiDAR, uh, that was pulling enough power that the, uh, the power would go down and would reset. It's kind of funny you get scans for a minute and then we'll So this is a procedure uh, that you have to go through and from scratch it's around a day to build up your system on a Raspberry Pi 3. So when we actually teach the course we'll have the SD card already made and ready to go. So this is typically what you have to do, you have to get, and uh, I understand now, we, we went with the, I went with the Mate because they didn't have an original 1604 when the Raspberry Pi came out. Now I understand there's a Ubuntu release that's supposed to be really low overhead. The Mate takes up around three gig on the disk, so. In a what release? Uh, was it L L U B? How's it? I don't know how it's pronounced. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Yeah, Ubuntu with an LXD graphical environment. Yeah. Okay. So Rohan said, "Hey, do that." I said, "Well, <laughs> after three weeks trying to get this to work, I'm not going to try another release right now." But that's something I'll look at uh, after drinking heavily for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know. I was copying, uh, this is, uh, you know, true confessions, <laughs> true confessions, I'm a sinner. I was copying an SD card from my laptop, and instead of copying the image to SDB, I copied it to SDA. <laughs> and I said, uh, oh, whoops, and I stopped it, but not before I wiped out my dual Boot. Windows 10 uh, 1404 system that I took. It took me at least three weeks to get Windows 10 working on it. And so now I no longer have Windows. I'll probably never go back to Windows 10. But, but the good side is I now have my uh, laptop on 1604 and it's very clean. There's lots of free space. Uh, I was, I was pretty sad for a day. Okay, so some of the other things, some of the other gotchas. Uh, RPI update upgrades to firmware, and some, you have to look for that. And then you also have to get the raspy config, and that allows you to do things like turn on the camera, and turn on the I2C bus, and uh, it's easier to use those programs as opposed to actually try to work with UDEV rules and put things into the config.txt. Yeah. I, I just was curious, I mean, can, can you, can the, uh, the, the steps you're, you're describing for Raspberry Pi, is it, is, is it, it, you know, to doing the same thing on another platform, like, like for example, BeagleBone or something like that, is it, is it, is it kind of similar? I mean, it is similar. Way? I mean, you wouldn't use the RPI update in the Raspberry config, okay. but the thing is, I think a BeagleBone wouldn't run a 1604 yet, okay. or it may not. Okay. I mean, as part of the Ubiquity project, you know, we started on laptops, then we did Beagle Bones, then we tried something called a, a, a rock board. And the problem is, and then we were on Raspberry Pi 2, and then, so it's like, it's always a continuously moving target and the power increases, and each time you have to go through the steps again. So all our Raspberry Pi 2s were running 1404 on Indigo. And now, go to Kinetic, and by the time we get that fixed, it'll be ROS2. 
So it's, uh, we'll always be behind the curve because we're on the bleeding edge. Alan? Yeah. Does Mate come with Raspi config or do you have to go find it? No, I have to go get it. I mean, the Mate desktop has a little, I'll, I'll actually pull up the Mate desktop a little later, so it has a nice configuration screen which has a nice utility to expand your SD card so you can start off with a, you know, a, a smaller image and then expand it. But I also found out that not all 16 gig cards are the exact same size. Sure. So you can have a 16 gig image and then put a card that's 15.99 and then it says, oh, I can't copy the image even though it's just empty space. So when, it, when, when you expand, never go all the way to the last sector, basically. Yeah, that's a, that's a, I wish I had known that. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is on that utility, it just says expand, yep, I know. as opposed to doing a, a, a G-parted and doing it in a same way. Command line, boorah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is we're trying to That do way you can type SBA instead of SB. Uh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> SD, SDA instead of SDB. Exactly. Oh, no, the other way. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry if you're not doing Unix or not familiar with Unix, you're going to have a miserable time trying to do ROS. You're going to have to learn the command line. No way around it. You're going to have to spend the time. Just like if you want to write scripts, you're going to have to spend some time learning Python or, you know, suffer. Uh, I'm not going to give. I think most people here, I don't have to give you a lesson in Linux. You probably can give me a lesson. Here are some of my favorite commands. <laughs> All right, so then we go into the uh, ROS Kinetic install, and it's, uh, we're getting our, we're doing two things. We're getting our main desktop through the sudo apt, uh, app get, and getting it from uh, repositories. And then we're getting the custom stuff through a Captain workspace. So you have these sort of like these three things, three major components. You have the you have your uh, uh, Unix uh, infrastructure. You have your ROS basics, and then you have your custom stuff. And the custom stuff goes into. So I'm doing. I do a full desktop full. Even though we're not going to be most likely using all the desktops, because most of the stuff we have ha needs has dependencies under dependencies on dependencies, <laughs> and most of the time, if you just get a, if you just do the basic, you're going to spend you're not going to save any time because you're going to have to keep on getting those dependencies. Yeah. So does desktop full attempt to install RViz and does it work? Uh, Does it you, successfully yes. Yes. Well, four times out of five, it's worked. <laughs> Today, I you know I was I was doing teleop fine, and then I said I wanted RQT. I wanted RViz. I said no RViz here. I did desktop full. I but, had the, in my but the install actually install RViz successfully. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh, I've done this. I've done this on four. I think I've done five Pi threes, and it only didn't work on one. One time, the first one I tried, I tried to do desktop, but not desktop full. And then I spent another four or five hours chasing down each dependency. Each time I do a cat and make, it was oh, you're missing this. Oh, you're missing this. Oh, you're missing this. And so basically what I did is I had two screens, one with cat and make and one with pseudo app get. And in between I vacuumed the house, I took out the garbage. Okay, so the rest of the things are uh, the raw step init and then setting up your uh, environment in your bash RC. Uh, the pseudo app get Python ROS install is really important. And it has things like Git in there that you're going to be using a lot. And then, so that's your that's your main ROS in op ROS Kinetic. Then you have your uh, workspace where you put all the goodies, like uh, intro to ROS, 
to control the bot back. And I like to use uh, uh, Patrick Goebel's Ross by example, because uh, I have that, that's my Bible, and I run, I, as the, I try to run those scripts, and then modify them, that's how I, I learn my stuff. So what are the other things you need to do? You have to set your host name and uh, edit your host name and host files. And Preferably without rebooting in between, just a thought. Yeah. You need to change them both at the same time. Yes, <laughs> and reboot. Uh, Not well, that I do. <laughs> well, that's why you also have your Ethernet cable so you can plug directly and into the, the router. HDMI monitor. Yeah. yeah. Or an HDMI monitor. That's why you do the desktop. Because yeah. while it's while you can certainly do Wi-Fi discovery by the command line, it's much easier to click on a box and bring it down. D did you know that there's an interesting message about the Biquity that comes up when you install 1604 on the desktop? And it says something about uh, canceling ubiquity or something funny. I just thought it was great. You guys might want to watch it install on desktop sometime. It's funny. Okay. Because that's what they're in. <laughs> okay. Once this is built, we test by doing ROS CD and ROS core to see that things that you think should be the, there are there. And if they're not, try to figure out why they're not. And, uh, there's a magic troubleshooting raw step install that that was uh, that Tully gave us that yeah. fixes lots of sins. And I'm not sure if I have that right. It was from past. It might be just path source as opposed to cache and source. But that, that thing, I'm telling that came from first. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Don't mean to disperse. <laughs> So get me. Uh, okay, then a common problem is you don't have the right permissions on USB or ACM0, so it'll give you an error saying, what port? You get the same thing if the uh, if your uh, robot is turned off, right? You can't see the signal port. So LS USB to see if the port's there. But the common Pi problems. Pi 3 has changed their serial port names. I think that's TTYS0 now. Yeah, the Pi 3, well, if you're using the UART. I'm just mentioning this to you because you're... If you're, if you're going from the USB, roll. if you're going through the X, the USB, it's okay. Yeah. If you're using the UART pins, they mucked around with it, and the Bluetooth is on what you would think right. the UART pins are. Right. So you, you sent me that link to fix that. That's a config... That's in the boot config. I just wanted to mention it because yeah, it's, thanks it's for something reminding that you us. don't think they'd ever do, but they did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've not gotten the Bluetooth to work on this, but I think that's because my Bluetooth controller died. So I've never tried to, I've never gotten the Bluetooth to work properly. Even though it says, I mean, it said it was discovered, but I never saw it actually work. Okay. Uh, and these are the two things that I usually start off with when I'm doing a bot back. The Ross by example and the intro to Ross. So. For my next trick, I will attempt to Switch over to this guy. Do you deal with the uh, various network configuration things about where you want to run as a uh, What's it called? A uh, local host um, or, uh, uh, access point, or where you want to run with your local area network? And oh, okay. okay. We're coming up. One of coming up. Uh, I put it all. Well, actually, I'm using the external access. <coughs> Thank you. 
Nobody gets my password. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm bad for security. <clears throat> this is not good. Oh, helps if I plug the keyboard in. <laughs> Doesn't that help? Good security. Powering off my uh, laptop, and I shut my laptop. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> Student driver. This is my screen now. So this is uh, this I'm running right off the Raspberry Pi now. So I left the uh, the Mate desktop as it comes up, and it'll come up with a little configuration screen that I believe I've left on here. cool things about the welcome screen when you first come in. It'll give you some pie information and one of the things is it'll allow you to uh, expand your desktop but not in the way that Mark recommends. So it'll tell you, you know, it's an easy thing to do when you're first starting. Okay. Now, with just this, you can learn ROS. You don't need a robot. Okay. So you see what I needed to do to get things to work here. How many things I had to app get to get everything working. Because uh, the architects wouldn't work. Excuse me? Is this the one that you did desktop and not desktop? I did desktop full on this. I think what happened though is during a pseudo apt upgrade, it got interrupted. And even though I did subsequent upgrades and updates, somehow. A lot of stuff was missing. Arviz wasn't there. RQT, none of it was there. I did a full, you see the last thing I did was a full, I don't see it here. I did that from another, I did an RQT star to get everything. Yeah, because RQT image wasn't there, you know. So now if I say raw, this is how you can test things. Well, the first thing to do is test is raw score, right? So is your Pi plugged into the monitor here? The Pi is plugged into the monitor here. So I'm driving through. So we're seeing the Pi's desktop. We're seeing the Pi's desktop. We're not going remote. So the thing is, the point of it being is that if you had an HDTV and a keyboard and the system, you could start learning ROS even if you didn't have a robot. So uh, 
one of the things that I like from Ross by example is it has a fake robot using, uh, I think it's Fergie worked a lot with this, with the uh, simulator. So uh, this will actually bring up a, a false robot. Then I can bring up Teleop, I can bring up Arviz, and I can drive a simulated robot, hopefully. And if that's successful, uh, somebody better buy me a beer after this. Are you adjusting this? Oh, the second screen, I'm sorry. Here's where I need dual screens. Keep it as not the best. All right, now if I resize this. I did Teleop. Did I open Teleop already? So it's in the world. I'm in the world. I'm in the world. Yeah. So I'm running Ross. I'm running Arbiz. I'm driving a robot. Come on. That deserves applause. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Want to come up here and do that? In our biz, yeah. To Odo. Yeah, and that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I am. <laughs> Keep that confused look on your face, okay? That, that's not how it works. 
secret itself for me to watch. Yeah. I'll go backwards now. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Okay, all right. It's hard to do this without a mouse, especially ARV is with the zooming. Oh, God, I went off the edge of the world. I'm sorry. Let's put Telly up and turn him around. Bring him oh, yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. do a rotate and you keep going. Yeah, you've got both the button mouse buttons down and drag the mouse. All right, okay, all right. For my next trick, I'll attempt to dr drive a real robot, okay? <laughs> So uh, this is Alfred over here, and I'm going to bring Buddy up now. So Buddy's over there. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get him to network without a cable, but sometimes I brought my own Wi-Fi routers. So, oops. Uh, switch back to here. So, Rohan, I think you had hot in the and you got three. I think you can get that hot in the work. Then you can get 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 hot in the work. So um, uh, I've modified the intro to Ross codes. So I'm just doing a no joystick launch. So, I'm, 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 what Ralph over here Ralph Knopfler wrote all these notes to the music. So, uh, and he did a terrific job. One little irritation is he wrote it to work with a, uh, uh, I guess it's a XP the uh, PS2 joystick. That you can change as a parameter in yeah. the launch file. But uh, I, I had a joystick that worked for a while, but now it, it stopped working. So I just didn't want to see the error message saying there's no joystick. Okay. So I wrote a node that took the joystick out of it. Yeah. So that's that's custom node. Uh, I'm publishing an article in Servo that has the node for the node joystick, which is basically the joystick, <coughs> which is the is base, except the joystick line is taken out of it. So you don't have to create it from scratch because I'm really bad with, un, you know, uh, the right number of spaces in Python that still gets me. Yeah. So if things are working, this guy should be. Yep, he just started up. Those uh, XC11s are real noisy on the lidars. So um, that's the, uh, yeah, I can see somebody else there. So now if we uh, get the camera down. Uh, <coughs> pointing on him, yeah. The original X, we had a slip ring on the S. The box X is a rotary transform, it's clear. No. 
not moving, Alan. Well, I just want to see it from getting scan data across on the network. Oh. Then I'll know if I can uh, drive it or not. If I don't see scan data, I know there's something. Oh, okay. Now that I'm seeing, you now that I'm seeing scan data, I know the communication through the network is working okay. That's not a guarantee that I can drive it though, because it may. Uh, what happens is Ross is using the host names, and if it can't resolve the host names. It throws a hissy fit. So even though you can ping the machines and see topics listed, if you don't have that two-way communication by name, not IP number, you don't go anywhere. Okay, so hopefully I can... Uh, Turn the robot. And no. Keyboard plugged in? Yeah. All the ships to the right topic? Yeah, no, this sometimes happens, it's a network thing. So normally when it happens though, on the plot back side, I'll see a message saying that it can't resolve my name. So I can try one other thing. And that's to set my... The wrong R. Yeah. Oh, sorry. here but then I, I could run my uh, I could run the Ross calibration stuff. The only thing that's really interesting about and I discussed this before is on the uh, XV11 there's a problem with the USB bus buffering I was told so when you try to drive straight for long distance it stutters so that makes trying to calibrate turns really hard. It's not a problem at all on the bot facts. And uh, any any other questions? So when will this class be take, given? We're try we're thinking about January. January. Okay. I, I'm just one of the instructors. Greg Maxwell is organizing. And uh, will people have to find their own bot facts, or do you think folks are going to show up? Well. I have friends at Nito. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> it's it's under negotiation. Yeah. Okay. Just like just Trump's like free, just free. like uh, Trump's <laughs> cabinet, we're having <laughs> negotiations. No politics. Hopefully Come not on. like yeah. that. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, let's give Scallops. let's yeah. give Alan a round of applause. wraps it up. We're going to go into a random access where we just okay. mill around and talk. I kick everybody out at 10. And if you have one of these badges, which is not your long-term official badge, please drop it in the box as you go out so that you can fish it out the next time, okay? Uh, and with that,
to that. Hopefully everybody will show up in uh, January for our January meeting. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.